What's up guys, this is The Rifleman and I am back bringing you the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Russia. So to round off our last time, we've effectively blitzed through northern northern India and we are at the gates, we're at the point of finishing off destroying the Marathon Confederacy. Uh, we've gone past and completed the campaign objectives. Um, but I'd like to destroy the Marathas just because I've been at war for them so long it would be rather nice to kind of Finishing off in that way. It's probably going to be this army under Peter Lacey that's going to be threatening Goa. Um, there is an army besieging Satara with a proper garrison force. It, could be, it looks like it could be quite an interesting battle. I've got quite an interesting elite um, army with some heavy horse howitzer artillery, so plenty of quicklime to go around. If anything, this army will probably end up uh, moving in to support them just to, have, just to surround this place. They do have an army coming down from Baghdad. Which actually, actually, guys. Good job, I checked. Because they very much can. At least, oh, no, wait. Can I? So if I do that, I'm pretty sure I have to go. If I go into the port, I can. Yeah, if I go into the port, I can do that. Just out of... No, they're not out of range. I will fight it, just because it's a cool unit. Yeah, <laughs> just because it's a cool army. Uh, let's bring up this last unit. Bring them up. Cool. But yes, whatever happens, this will be the finale of this campaign. <laughs> Both of these battles are happening today. Uh, so maybe Goa might happen as the, the warm-up. The, the warm-up, the fluffing battle of the game, of the campaign, and then the main feature will be the destruction of the um, main, or the last capital city, Satara. But what have I observed playing as Russia? Pretty much don't be afraid uh, to throw your guys in, just with your bayonets, because your guys are pretty handy. You've got huge, huge blocks of troops, so even though your guys might qualitatively be not as good as Prussia or Great Britain um, if you advance their infantry tax high then fire by rank more than makes up for the difference and then as you get to the advanced military buildings you start to gain um, experience and training for your men which again starts to level out even more and to be honest if you can get as, as it's kind of usual for empires if you can get that early game advantage then by the time they catch up to you, you've got a solid economy. And at that point, it's like, well, it doesn't really matter if you can... Your guys are technically better for me, better than me. Um, you know, um, man for man. But what does matter is that I can produce a hell of a lot more of them. So you think Russia right now, if I, if I took all of these... So what have I got? Five or six full-stack armies here in India? If I effectively withdrew them all to Europe think of the damage I could do recruit just local garrisons out of, lo you know, out of troops out of local units then leave them to it I think oh, there are naturally occurring resources in this region that are not yeah I've not really gone round the map and invested in all of my industrial buildings as I really should into it and this is how you kind of steamroll the economic bonuses you get from these cities are ridiculous Suez has developed so let's get you a craft workshops workshop Kidoki. don't think there's anything more to it really I want to bring this army up to here there is no walls there's no walls around Goa there is walls around Satara and they have mortars so I'm probably going to want to well yeah if I use my my mortars well but yes I'm going to fight this battle because oh god I'm going to fight it <laughs> I hate seeing the slider be that 
this much weighed in my favour because it makes me think instinctively, oh, I don't want to fight it, but really I do because it's a cool Russian army, lots of elite units, it's a general field marshal of the army, got lots of regular decent line infantry and special guard units. So even though it's going to be a quick battle, I've, we're in the end game now. <laughs> oh. Um, but yes, me, it's all about your infantry. And don't be afraid to recruit militia and keep them. Because as you can see, I've used, I've kept militia, um, you know, the, Strel the Gordon Strelsky, however it's pronounced militia in my armies all the way through this campaign. When in melee, and when I've started to go all in and I've started the charge, then it doesn't really matter if they're not very good. There's a swarm of Russians heading their way. So they should take note. Well, before we go, let's have a look at these units first. So this is 4th Horse Guards Household Cavalry, which look lovely in their blues and reds. In actual, the facings of the jackets are different. They're the tricorn hats, they're bike... No, they are tricorn hats. Yes, 4th Horse Guards Household Cavalry Unit. Lovely. So a general field marshal of the army. So their troops, similar to the, to the Household Cavalry, have different facings. Um, slightly different colours, but look very professional and very, very good. 60 men in this unit, so it's actually quite a decent unit of cavalry, and they have guns. Do they have carbines, or do they have pistols? I want to say pistols, because... Range 30, well it's got to be pistols, I don't know. Abilities, diamond, can, can rally, garrison, resistant to morale, skins, resistance to, resistant to heat, resistance to cold. Officer rank... Bit of history on field marshals. The equipment is generally the finest quality. Ah! A strong sword arm with a deadly aim with a pistol. So they are. Accuracy 32. Well, so they draw the little pistols. That's pretty cool. The 139th Regiment of Foot. So this is the. effectively the upgraded Russian line infantry. Um, standard line infantry unit. But it looks damn impressive with its sashes and once it's all kitted out with bayonets. And these are all the same regiment of foot units, but the 7th Grenadier Regiment Priyoboralensky Guard Grenadiers. And these guys are crouched hiding, so let's pick these guys, because they are not. Similar similar layout to the uh, to the regiment of foot, same with the sashes, same colour. But they've got these lovely little hats on with feathers at the back. And they just look rather, rather lovely. And then the S Simonovsky Foot Guards. Again, these guys are hiding. These look more like regular grenadiers. Same treatment with the flowers, but they look more like ferns. Well, they aren't ferns, but they look like ferns. But they're rather cool looking troops as well. Anyway, yes, uh, good old deployment. As you can see, these units are. The, these foot units are slightly um, reduced compared to the. Oh, God. Slight. I forget. <laughs> I was really, I really was not expecting um, the Indian armies to crumble the way they did. Oh yes, and the Butyersky Regiment foot. And they look rather cool. It's one of their faces they look very pale. They look a bit peaky, but the uniforms look good. But they are slightly different. So this guy's got his, his things all buttoned all the way down. So you can't see something, can't see his breeches. But this guy's got them pinned open. Maybe he wants to have a pee. But yes, just line them up. Let's be honest, I'm assaulting, aren't I? So if I'm assaulting, I'm probably going to want to have all my cavalry on one flank. That is going to be such a devastating battery. Put this unit out on the far right. This bunch of five. And then guarding my grand battery. I want to give that duty to uh, this unit of militia. And the Bajuski foot guard. And no, let's keep the Simonevsky foot guards this side with this guy. Household cavalry and advance up the left. And the general field marshal with fire will off is going to stand here. 
in my single unit of how it says he's going to deploy. Deploy up front because they're going to move up. But fly a quick climb. And let's get cracking. No point in running them up. First volley of quicklime shot onto this unit of horsemen. Oh, yes. There's more where that came from. <laughs> yeah, like that. Holy moly. Is that unit of musketeers? Lost, lost, what was that? 80 troops ish. To be honest, I'm going to limber them up. May as well just keep my artillery firing because they don't fire in straight lines, they fire in nice arcs. What a brilliant position for artillery AI. You're going to shell the shit out of this building. My guys are having a pop though. Knocked out one of the guns and killed a few gunners. Ah, okay, so you guys might want to actually run because they're coming up to meet you by the looks of it. Everyone else. Let's move my howitzers up. It's very elite army, fresh from Moscow. There goes to the. Oh, they're, they're, I thought they were running, but they are walking. So it's the 140th Regiment of Foot, which is probably going to hit, going to open fire first. No. Horse cars go straight into the fire like armed populace. They are not going to stop you. There you go. Everyone's opening fire onto this unit of armed populace. Oh no, ain't not the armed populace. The musketeer unit. So let's get a good look. Yeah, as you can see, these guys can do fire by rank. So the accuracy isn't as good. And the reloading skill isn't as good. Um, but their melee stats are really, really good. So if you can get fire by rank, you can get the firepower advantage. Until you weaken them down, then don't be afraid. Just, just flick on, uh, flick on, bayonet charge. Or you know, just get them on the charge. Do you know what these guys just? This flank just try roll them up because my general's bodyguard is just gonna. Or my household cavalry is just gonna have a go at everything. Hold fire on my howitzers. They're more than capable of destroying these, this unit. All that's left is that unit of dervishes at the back. Which, to be honest, I'll start shelling the hell out of with quicklime. Obviously being very, very careful to not... Uh, To not get my, not make them open fire onto targets they want them to open fire on. Shift this regiment of foot. They're about to open fire. There you go. Set them to hit that unit of derv dervishes at the back. But yeah, just never be afraid. Just to flick on bayonet charge. Can we see my Nevsky foot guards into the fray? 
They look so stupid with those hats. Oh, sorry. They look like the happiest grenadiers ever. We're going to kill you and we love it. Would you like to hear a word about our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Absolutely chewed up. Full on route. Dose is getting chewed up by my quicklime shot. Yeah, this was just not even a battle, was it? And then they just let their dervishes run up into my killing ground. Oh, hello. See, they're trying to reorganise, but my guys, the firepower is just too good. Let's get my grenadiers, oh my, um, troops out of the way. Let me just run these guys to the rear. You must be ready to fire soon. Yeah, some of their troops are coming back. Just keep my household cavalry safe into the rear. Just get in there at this point. I feel bad my generals not got stuck in. So unlike in Rome to War, I would love to send my generals in. I, I just thought it was a really important part of the game. Um, get your generals stuck in. This game not so much because he, he, he's definitely got more of a staff officer vibe to him. Um, right, so let's watch these guys get in the charge. Absolute smashing elite Russian infantry, top quality Russian cavalry. What chance did they have? This unit, good lord, just. Absolutely slaughtered. <laughs> Alright. Send it there, guys. There's no point in trying to hurt. <laughs> oh, holy moly. 136 men lost. The city's been captured. I'll fix it. And this army's going to join, also join the Siege of Satara. Which one do I want to make the attack? To be honest... So this one's got not as good artillery. Well, no. this one's got not as good as artillery. So I'd like to have more howitzers, and I don't want to move my armies around too much because they could trigger an assault from that. So what I'm going to do is, to be honest, I'm still going to assault them. Um, if I wait for one turn, then it won't be as fun. So let's move in. Can't move these forces around. But let's make it so that my Simonevsky guards would come on first. Not that I think I'll, I'll need them necessarily, but I think it would be fun. If I did lose units to routing, then it would be some of my elite troops. But yes, I want this one to be first. I've got two units of heavy horse howitzers to quick climb the hell out of these mortars. Rightio, let's fight the final battle. Of the campaign. It's hell, because it's a siege. <laughs> oh. No, not quite naked. I don't have my uniform on. Well, then that's not quite naked, then, is it? Because uniform's a jacket and trousers and shoe. And your undershirt. And, you know, the uniform's a lot of stuff. No, at least on my, you know, hear the you know police wandering around going, ah, I'm not quite naked. 
you'd, you'd hope those wouldn't be words in their vocabulary. Or at least that they would use in that particular time. So what I'm going to do is, because I've got heavy horse guard artillery units, is do this a bit differently. So I want to make a couple of breaches on various sections of the walls. Split the effort. Foot guards, line guards. Let's just get these guys for responsible for this section of the line of the wall. And these guys responsible for this section of the wall. Then my cavalry in general are gonna gonna stay at the flank. Heavy howitzer is gonna be firing quick climb. No, they're going to have to be round shot. No. Okay, so where are they? They're deployed as far up as really as I can get. So, because I've been too slow, I've not quite got a... So I'm going to want to round shot their mortars then. To be oh god, one volley got 64. Oh no, it's probably because my my things firing, guys firing quick climb also. Turn on fire well for the quick climb. Quick climb's pretty good. This breed, these guys have already done their job. So aim at the other section of the wall, I suppose. Okay, because these guys are getting shelled to hell. I'm going to move them up. To be honest, actually I may as well just run them up because I've got another army in reserve and it'd be fun to watch this first army break upon break upon this fortress like water on a rock. These guys are walking. There we go. Form square. They don't form a square. Charge into them. Keep them in the gap.
You're going to be a bit unexposed on the flank. Okay, now to round shot and aim at the middle. Aim at the mortars. down try get your unit up onto the wall that's the safe thing to do let's be honest try to get those guys into a building Deploy the Tsar guards down. Hit the armed populace, may as well just run straight in. Missed these guys completely. Starting to fire by rank into their own men. Charge the walls. These guys are charging down the passageway into these infantry guards. are being killed by Tsar guards and are slowly being chipped away. Yeah, that's fair enough for the Tsar guards to run away. Storm through the breach. Don't climb down the wall, you adults. Actually, maybe they should be better off getting inside if they're going to get picked off by cavalry. My men aren't going to win against the unit of infantry guards, but I've got plenty more men to get involved. Such is the way of the such is the Russian way of war. To be honest, let's run my cavalry in. So they're causing a hell of a lot of damage on this front rank by the by the gates. In here, lots of my units are being absolutely hammered. Charge this unit in the rear. Another unit of infantry guards. Let's 
run that unit just forward into position. Just to pour fire into the centre. Charge through the centre. Because yes, at least, at least these guys inside will be able to fire into the combat. Which, with horses, they're bigger targets, they'll generally take more damage. And they're destroying their own city more than I am. to the center. Got lots of spooky camels there for my horses. So then get a few more rounds off just to knock out some of these camel units so then I'll just charge them my Household cavalry, to be honest, they could probably do the job themselves right now. They're firing at rank. Oh, they're aiming at the cannons. That's refreshing. They're hitting the camels as collateral damage. Yep, see, there you go, running these guys into the house. The musket fire has just drawn them out. Yeah, they're about to retreat. So, storm everyone in! Actually, don't charge them in, actually. Run like there. everything. So I've got a feeling the whole, every unit is just going to run away in one go. How many have you got? 20. 20 men. Garrison that building. Yeah, camels are bad for my horses, but I've got lots of very, very good horses, and... Yeah, it's just not going to work out for them, is it? Royal Indian Infantry Guards. We've got a unit here that's going to start firing by rank. Let's get my howitzers back on the go in supporting my units. There we go. Here, oh, wow, that's just regular round shot as well. No, don't do that. I totally clicked on the wrong unit there. I wanted this guy to hit that unit of howitzers. Loaded him around the face. Two men left. See, my guys are wavering because they're being 
fired upon by someone. Well, they were. Got some guards, Zar guards up in here, firing out the windows. Only 20 of them, though. Sit my household guard proudly on the centre square. For the Indians did fight bravely. Ooh, it's a good position for my reinforcements to come, too. There you go. The dying throws this campaign. So it's giving me any respect for Indian mercenary guard that are fighting somewhere up on this up on these walls. Oh no, my line of tree did manage to win eventually. But yeah, let's just watch the valiantly fighting to defend the last city they own. However, under artillery bombardment and superior superior infantry tactics that was that that's quite a good quite a fun little siege actually <laughs> lovely jubbly let's end the battle with their final heroic victory but that's because they're cowards <laughs> but yes that was a victory for us we have destroyed the Mughal Empire faction so the only thing that would remain were I carrying this on would be to anni annihilate Mysore which with the forces at my disposal are more than adequate um, but yes the Indian subcontinent is mine and I think to be honest it's probably quite a good spot to end the campaign because you have a fun bashing through the north west as you can see, the, after the few the battles we got tied up along this river here, you can see that's where the where the the tipping point happened. I managed to smash them back a few times. Then when I landed to the rear, loads of cities were just undefended, and the ones that were had poor garrisons, and they just couldn't stop me. And the steamroller went on. Um, so let's do a bit of a let's just do a bit of discussion on Russia. So Russia, um, big open country. And Moscow is where all of the fun units are to recruit. So if you want to expand into other areas, you pretty much need to have roads. Metal roads are a very important research uh, to have. And as it, in, in addition to uh, farming and industry, which isn't really game-breaking stuff. Um, but yes, it's just a bit of a bit of solid investing across the board. Spend all of your money on infrastructure upgrades and um, buildings that generate tax because like so in this case this is the val this is the most valuable thing about russia because i am navally weak you can choose not to be but i chose to be so i did not want my income to be based on uh trade which is susceptible to blockade so as you can see all of my blockaded all of my trade is being blockaded by the swedes because i never tried to beat this fleet it was too much the, the money and time it would take to defeat this blockading port wouldn't be worth it an option could have been defeating Sweden, but trouble is now they're in now they're into the continent down here and in Copenhagen. I didn't really want to expose myself that far north. I was quite content with just keeping them at arm's length. But you can see how valuable overland trade is. It can't be disrupted in the same way. But yeah, those are my general tips. Invest in your economy. Get your tax base up. Did I change my tax? So yeah, knocked it down for lower classes just to get the growth going. Obviously Crimea is a nice one to have because it opens up some trade ports on the south which Sweden can't normally block. Um, but yeah, other ways people have played it is people have played it where they've just ignored um, the south. They kind of just held here. Um, take um, take Sweden, capture Britain, and then they've gone a bit... It's just a big overarching play of Northern Europe to give them um, something to play with Russian getting Russian troops into the Americas, which obviously I've not done. Because it would, would be tricky. They'd be annihilated if I tried to go through the Baltics. Would have pretty much have to secure um, Scandinavia and try and use. They got yeah. I'd have to use this port to generate a reasonable fleet to sail westwards, which I didn't really want to do because I think it felt it fit better for me in this campaign to focus on the Indias because I haven't done a campaign yet with a storm through India in such a fashion. 
let's have a look at our prestige and see we are see we're actually not super high prestige because the spanish naval prestige and the swedish naval prestige is so high and i'm fairly sure these are kind of warped so they don't really mean as much as they used to um because i've seen examples where they've gone oh they've you've got a massive navy and i go i've got three ships they're good ones sure but they're not you know i'm not the third most powerful navy in the world yeah, I've ended with final stats of getting in 52,000 a turn and this would completely explode because you know I've not done a great job in making sure I've kept all of my buildings in America in India up to date, lots that are being built and upgraded so the tax income would have exploded um, but yes, this is the finale of my Russia campaign, so thanks everyone for watching it's been fun playing as Russia it's playing a slightly more melee focused um, faction than I would normally play in Empire Total War, and it opens up some interesting options. And they got some cool units, which unfortunately I didn't get to. I didn't get a chance to play them all, play with them all. Um, but this is what happens. Russia is a big country. And if you're transporting ships by land, it takes a long time. So you see, it worked out quicker to ship them to Crimea, sail them to um, Latakia, then run them down to Basra, then ship them into India. That was the fastest way to do it. And even then, that was still what. Six, eight turns, maybe. Two turns to Crimea. One turn to here. That's three, four, five to Basra. No, six turns, actually, to get them into theatre. But still, six turns to get your army in. A lot can happen in six turns. And the trouble is, six turns to get an army here. I don't know about, say, it takes about five turns to recruit it in Moscow. That's 11 turns. You can recruit an army from Lahore in here in 11 turns easily and it'll be cheaper because you've got East India Company infantry and basic artillery and basic cavalry. So that's the challenge here. But yes, thank you everyone for watching me in this campaign and this campaign will be replaced in the rotation um, by Napoleon Total War Darth Mod as Great Britain which I've really not played much of so should be fun. I know the mechanics are slightly different and the research tree is different and you know other bits and bobs but yeah it should be fun so thanks for watching guys hope you've enjoyed my russian campaign and and that's it for now